Hello everyone, I want to show you how to solve a system of equations using the TI-36X Pro. Now solving equations isn't really hard with this calculator. All you need to do is push a couple of buttons. You also get to type the equations in where they look pretty much like what you have on your paper. Okay, it can handle two equations with two variables, three equations with three variables. Now if you're using a TI-84, it works a little differently than this. This is actually a feature of the 36 that other calculators don't have. The TI-30 doesn't have it. I'm not so sure about the TI-34 because I've never used one, but I know the TI-30 does not, okay? If you're gonna use the TI-84, you're gonna to have to go with some matrix operations. This calculator does the matrix operations, but not quite the same way that the 84 would. It's a little bit more limited. But anyhow, that's for another video. Right now, we want to solve this guy right here. So what we're going to do to solve it is we've got to find it in the calculator. It says system solve right here. So what we're going to do is hit second tangent. It gives me the system solver. Okay. There's two variables, X and Y, and there's two equations. So I want the two by two. So I press enter on that. Now, I already typed this one in. And I tried turning the calculator off and turning it back on. And when I did that, it kept it in memory. Okay, so I don't really have to type this in, but I'm going to go through how to type it. We're going to press 3, enter. Then it jumps you over to this sign, and you can change it to a negative sign if you want. I'm going to leave it positive, so I'm going to press plus. And then we can type in the 27. Oops, I don't want to type a fraction, just 27. And then type in 19. And then it jumps you down to the second row. We type in 7. Now it's plus, so I'd hit a plus and just leave it as a plus. Then I'm going to type in a 7 and type in 19. Ah, there's what I did wrong earlier. I typed the wrong number. That's 16 up there. Okay. Well, you just go up to it, move over to it, and you can type 16. I made a mistake and typed the wrong number. That happens, and I'm kind of glad I did it. Could I, I show you? Just move the cursor to it. Type in the 16. So we have 3, 27, 16, 7, 7, and 19. Does everyone see that? Yes. Okay. Then we just go down to hit solve and press enter. Okay. And it tells me X is 401 over 168. Y is 55 over 168. This calculator has a nasty habit of giving everything in fractions, never gives you decimals. If you want decimals, you just press the button right above enter and it'll tell you this is 2.386 and this one is 0 0.327. Okay, so you can see solving this is actually pretty simple. Let's try another one and see if we get something different. Okay, so I'm going to hit clear. And it gives me the solver back again. <clears throat> okay. So all I have to do is come up here and retype it. So I'm going to put 4 for X. This is positive, so I'm going to type plus. Then I'm going to type 3 for Y. Then I'm going to type negative 2. So I have to hit the negative button. This negative, not minus. You hit this minus, it's going to say error. So you have to hit the negative sign button, which is down here at the bottom. I got the video camera zoomed in too much okay but make sure you don't hit this minus button over here and then I'm gonna type in 8 for X now this time I need to change it to a minus so I hit the minus I type in 2 for Y and this is 12 and then I'm gonna press enter on solve this time it tells me X equals 1 Y equals negative 2 there's no decimals, so no need to push the magic button right above enter. Okay? Now let's go on and go to some systems of equations that have three variables and three unknowns. So for this one, I'm going to hit second system solve. Oh, press enter because it doesn't want you to do that. I'm going to hit second quit to get out of that. Quit's right next to second. So now I'm going to hit second system solve. I'm going to go down to a 3x3 three three this time. They're not so nice this time. They don't give you the X, Y, Z. So you're going to enter this more like you would write it out as a matrix. Okay. So I'm going to put 1, enter. 2, enter. 
negative one. Now, remember again, you're not using the minus sign right here. You're using the negative sign down there at the bottom, okay? And I didn't want to do this, but if I do it, you can see the whole calculator using the negative sign down here. So I'm going to put minus one, enter, and four, enter, okay? I think it's better if you see the screen, so I'm going to zoom back in. The next row is going to be two, enter, one, enter, one, enter. Now we're putting ones because there's understood ones in front of the Y and the Z. I get over here, I'm going to type negative two. So I've got the first two rows typed in. Let's type the third row. We're going to put one, enter, two, enter, one, enter. Then over here, I type two. Then it puts it on solve. So I hit solve. It takes it a little bit, but it tells me X is negative five thirds. I push the down button. Y is seven thirds. Push the down button again. It tells me Z equals negative one. Now, if I hit solve again, it'll let me type in another one. I'm going to hit quit because I feel like it and it takes me to the home screen. So you can see the two by two and the three by three behave a little bit differently. All right, now I'm going to pull down another one and we're going to solve another three by three. Okay, so I'm going to hit my second system solve again. We're going to go by three by three and hit enter. Now it keeps all the numbers in there, which is annoying. And if I turn it off and turn it back on, trying to clear that, guess what? It doesn't clear it, okay? I'm not sure how to clear it, other than just overriding them. So I'm just going to override it. So three by three. Now this time I'm going to put three, enter. One, enter. Now this is negative six, so remember, don't hit the minus button, hit the negative button, negative six, enter, and then negative 10, enter. Okay, two, enter, one, enter, negative five, enter, negative eight, enter. So we got the first two rows done over here. So then it's six, enter, negative three, enter, three, enter, and zero, enter. Then I'm gonna hit solve, okay? Now it's doing something different here. On a two by two, it won't do this. On the two by two, it'll say infinite many solutions. But on a three by three, it goes ahead and puts it in what's called parametric form. So it's telling me X is negative two plus Z. I actually like that. It's simplifying my life. I don't have to do as much work. If I did this with a matrix, I'd have to do some algebra to get this here. But this isn't a matrix, so I don't have to y equals negative 4 plus 3z and then down here z equals z so it's actually solving the parametric form for me which makes my life really easy i'm gonna go ahead and hit solve again because i got another one to solve okay now this one the first equation y is missing so when I type that in, I'm going to put a zero. So I'm going to have a one for the X. I'm going to put zero for the Y since it's missing. And then I'm going to put one for Z. And then this side of the equal sign is a one, so I press enter. Down here as I go through this, I put one, enter, one, enter, one, enter, and then two. There's ones in front of the X, Y, Z. This one has lots of ones for some reason. I'm going to put one, enter, negative one, enter, one, enter, and one, enter. And remember, when you put the negative, don't push the minus button. I'm going to hit solve. Now, this time it tells me no, no solution because there is no solution. Okay? When you're working with a 2x2 two two system solver, it will say no solution like that. I'm going to press enter. And it takes me right back to the solver. Now, what happens if this bottom row was not there? Can this thing still solve it when we're missing the bottom row? The answer is yes, I just go down to the bottom row, put zero, 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 and zero, and hit solve. You're gonna get a parametric solution this time. We're gonna get x equals one minus z. You're gonna get y equals one, and then you're gonna get z equals z, okay? <coughs> and again, if you've just got two equations with three variables, it can still do it, all right? I'm gonna hit quit. All right, now, just for fun, I'm gonna handwrite one on here, so I'm just gonna turn my paper, I'm gonna get a blank piece of paper, 
it's actually not blank, but we're going to do x plus y equals 7. 3x plus 3y equals 21. All right, I'm going to type this up and put it in the document. I'm just going to handwrite it here. So I'm going to hit second system solve. I'm going to hit 2 by 2. And we're going to type 1, enter. It's plus, so I hit plus, And then 1, enter, and 7. I'm going to type 3, enter. It's plus, so I hit 3. Then I type 3, enter, and 21, enter. And I'm going to hit solve. This time it says infinite. So I just wanted to show you the 2 by 2 works differently. It won't put it in parametric form. So it won't tell me like x is 3 minus t or something like that. It will in the 3 by 3 but not the 2 by 2. Okay, Which surprises me a little bit. Why doesn't it do the same with both? I don't know. You have to ask the guy who made the calculator. I'm not him. But I just wanted to show you that little quirk, quirk of it. Now, if I change this and get it to say no solution, this will still say no solution, just like the 3x3 three three does. Well, there you go. That's how you solve a system of solutions with a TI-36. I hope someone finds that helpful. Um, again, this document will be on Google Docs. There will be a link to it in the video, so you can download it and watch it. If you like these videos, subscribe. There will be math and science related videos coming in the next year or two. It takes a while to make these videos. And I don't have a lot of free time. But anyhow, hope you enjoyed. Subscribe. Annoy your friends with them. Have fun. Whatever. Have a good one.